of Angel Eyes Got Biz, and I'm continuing the series on falling in love with the bridegroom. Before I get started, if you would like to get my complete falling in love with the bridegroom devotional for free, check the link in the description below. This devotional will teach you how to have quiet time and give you ample scriptures to spend in devoted study with our Lord. Now let's get to today's devotional, and I'm going to start with prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you that you know each of us piercingly, completely, and you want the best for us, and nothing is impossible with you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. So today I'm going to read from Mark chapter 10, verses, let's see, verses 17 through 31. And I'm going to read from the English Standard Version. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. And as he, and he's talking about Jesus, was setting out on, on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it would be, for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. For many who are first will be last and the last first. So from this passage, what can we glean that the bridegroom is like? What Jesus is like? He loves piercingly, deeply, no excuses. He sees right through a person, right through their excuses, through the tight grip, for instance, I put on life. He wants a surrendered heart. With man, this is impossible, but with God, it is possible. He is looking for followers who will give it all. So what is my response to this? What am I holding on to? Am I holding on to pride? That I could do it all on my own? I can't. I need to let go of control. I like to say control is an illusion. If you're a fan of sticks, there's a song about that that I always think is apropos. But... We think that we could control things, but we can't. So, it's good to remember that. And then, what was God saying to me as I meditated? And I'm trying to read my own writing, which is really hard. Waiting on him is where true strength and wisdom lies. Yes, that's what I wrote. Wait, I'm going to repeat that. Waiting on him is where true strength and wisdom lies. And that's not easy to wait on him. But it's all about trust. And the more we go through these crises of phases, and crisis of faith, as Henry Blackaby writes about in his Bible study, Experiencing God, the more our muscles are built and the more strong we are in Christ. So, that is all that I have to say about that 
story that is in Mark. All right, so I'm going to say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help us to surrender control and to give everything we have to you. And we thank you that we will be rewarded. Help us to be faithful and true. And it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, so that is all for today's devotional. Tomorrow I will continue my series on falling in love with the bridegroom. Again, if you want the free devotional, check the link below. Would you like to go deeper with the scriptures? Find out more about my Becoming God's Bride Bible study. Check that out also in the, in the description box below. So with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond.